go ahead, Paul. Sorry to interrupt yep. you. Oh, no, 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 no worries. Um, so, yeah, so he had his roof looked at back in 2019, and this company called Smart Roof dropped the ball, and then he sort of just forgot about it. But, Christ, he's got about a fifty fifty two thousand dollar claim on this wood roof and i'm gonna go in and try and resurrect it it's a little complicated so uh unfortunately the claim was approved but now he's with a different company i said well that's fine the only problem we're going to have is whether or not um they're going to release the depreciation because i think we've gone past the mark i think it's is it one or two years that they you can build and then still collect depreciation that's going to depend on the insurance state. company yeah um, in the state yeah. Yeah. So it's Virginia Liberty Mutual, and I don't know if we can play the COVID card. Probably not. But um, from what he's telling me, and I'm waiting for him to send me more information. But from what he's telling me, it was it was it was approved August uh, 2019. So that's pretty far away. But the good thing is that the his HOA will allow either real real shake you know cedar or Da Vinci or da vinci uh um slate and or high-end uh regular asphalt shingles so we may have to get creative you know fortunately hopefully i don't know if we can go back and retroactively get pricing for cedar now if it was i don't know what i've got pricing from way back and i got pricing just a few days ago for my guys so right now for just medium cedar is like 875 for a square doesn't include starter doesn't include um split felt or anything just just the shing just a, a square of shingles 875 wow so i told the guy i said look i don't know why those guys dropped the ball and i said most of the guys don't have they don't have the teeth they don't have you know the skin man i said i always tell customers once i get a hold of an insurance company i either get blood or money i don't give up you know, whether it's a year, we've had some go two years. Most I've had the worst for me was a year and three months. And I just beat all state. Well, not me. Our public adjuster just beat all state again, went, went to litigation. And it's like, guys, why don't you just give it up early? And then the, the company that's writing the claim writes it up like, you know, like it was a independent adjuster that was hungry. So they end up paying a couple hundred more square than they would have if they just written it and given it to us from day one. Wow. I just, yeah, I just got it. So anyway, so I said, look, Mr. Homeowner, I'm sorry you went through all this. I said, I got, I got lots of tricks, not tricks, but I know stuff and what we got to look for, what we can do. You know, he's got copper, he's got copper valleys, which we can use that money to help offset some of the other stuff. Um, he's got a chimney, he's got, uh, you know, it, there's some stuff. You just got to find what's in there. And then he may, he may not be able to get, his dream roof, but at least we can get him a roof. Yep. That's so nice. anyway, but I hate that when those, well, I do hate it and I don't hate it because it makes them look bad, but why, why stick your foot in the door if you don't know what to do? Very I, true. I mean, I've been doing this, well, construction part-time since 76, full-time since 79, and I got interested in it when I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, so we, we lived we lived on a dirt road in south carolina i know i walked to school and all that there wasn't any snow but <laughs> so they were building these houses all around us so when they would tear all the trees down that was our fort me and my twin brother and then when the house started getting built we'd go watch these guys we'd watch them put up the batter boards we'd watch them dig the footers we'd watch them pour the footers we'd watch them put up the cinder block and frame it my mom even packed us lunches when we were five, six, wow. we would go over there, watch these guys. And when they would stop to eat, we got to sit down with them and have lunch and, you know, listen to them talk. It was, that's how I kind of got interested, I think. So how long have you been in the business as far as the roofing side? Oh, hardcore since 99. I mean, okay. the first hit, the first hailstorm was in 99. I'm sorry if I'm looking, I'm not looking at the screen, but, um, so yeah, first time was '99, and um, I've been doing it off and on since then. And now, now I'm just completely, you know, I'm all in. Because what I would do is I get beat up or tired of it, and I go back to carpentry, which is more comfortable. But I'm getting too old, and 
I, I can still do it in my mind. I just can't do it with my body. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah. So, so he will buy uh, his Paul. He hey, Paul. A roofer. Doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself, Paul? Well, it sounds like you actually have uh, quite the adventures going on because I was listening to your story. But um, I know just like you, you're in Virginia, um, Renee said. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, so um, I, I do, a, I have a YouTube channel and we've been doing like some interviews like this uh, for a few people uh, from different trades of, along the industry. And what I wanted to, what I wanted to do was kind of see kind of what these ladies are going for tonight and goals. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted, before they did that, I wanted to introduce my assistant, Evan. Evan is, lives in Texas. He's interested in getting into uh this industry he's just started this he's 18 years old this is his first job oh my um, goodness yeah out of college so he's working on becoming an um getting his adjuster license he's got general already oh. he needs one more wow um, well, so we so <laughs> we talked to roofers um in the past paul and again my name is ibahi um i live here in georgia and I've been with Metro for about five years. And what part of Georgia? Uh, just, huh? Uh, Atlanta. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm Atlanta. getting ready to go to uh, uh, Fripp Island down near Buford. Okay, cool. So um, I was listening to your story and, you know, it sounded like you mentioned um, using a public adjuster. What brought you and Renee together? How come? How, I know you. she's mentioned you before in the past. So... The other company I was working for mm -hmm. got a lead, I believe. I don't know if it was. Do you remember, Renee? Yes. You came over with George. I think his name was George to give an estimate on my roof. That's yeah. how we got to meet. Now, did you do? Did you like did you answer a uh, or did you send out something from like Angie's list or how do we how do we get the lead? That's a good question. I can't remember if I went through Angie's list or I went through just you know random companies. I can't remember, but it was a it was a couple of companies that came out and gave us estimates. But yeah. you, I remember you because George got really um, into it and he was really going into it about um, about you. So that's okay. really what really got me interested a little bit more. And then I gave you my public adjusting card. Cause you said yeah. you, you found my card. <laughs> well, I, I keep cards. I I found the card of a guy in high school that I I lost track with him four years ago, and we just reconnected. And then I, I had a card from 2010 for a painter, and I just reconnected with him. So it always pays to keep your cards. You know, keep yep. the files away somewhere. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. So um, for you, what was the, what was it that interested you the most, Paul, about um, talking to Renee about public adjusting? Well, I mean, I've known about public adjusters since I was the first time. Let me think. First time I met one, I think was in, I was in Oshkosh, um, and this guy was from Texas. Um, his name was Dave Payton. I don't know if he's still alive. That guy was he was overweight, had heart problems. Super uh -huh. nice guy. Mm -hmm. but, and then I met another. And then I met another guy, another public adjuster in Jackson, Tennessee. And when I saw the way he wrote up his estimate on his acclimate, it was like, good Lord, it was like way beyond, you know, anything an insurance company would ever possibly think of. Because there's so many, what I don't get too, and I always wonder about this, you know, I've read the white pages in his acclimate, and if you read it, you should get overhead and profit on everything. But yet, they're like, oh, yeah. it's, it's not complicated enough. Well, then how can a company stay in business? How can we pay our phone bills? How can we do this and that? And, and you know, guys don't want to pay that, and you want to and you, then you want to say that well, the, the hip and ridge is, is all part of this and the starter, but it's it's all separate. What would you give uh, for overhead and profit on every job? Well, I just the, had this discussion. Virginia, it's, it's ten and fifteen. Now, yeah, I'm but like, would you need ten to fifteen percent on every job? Why not? Why not one in one point five? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know if I can really answer that because I've never. I mean, I know sometimes even out just without that, we're still getting, you know, forty-five to over fifty-two percent probably profit. So, but, as a roofer, you're making what? 
Well, I'm a salesman, so I don't always see the numbers. I mean, I see the numbers from the insurance side. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a super numbers person. Like, like if, I've never really run a business where I had to keep track of all that stuff. So I know you have to have a certain, you know, they say, I think in this area, you got to mark stuff up at least anywhere from 33 to upwards of 52%. Okay. So for you, you're, um, you said you're, you work just for a roofing company or do you work for like a lot of contractors? No, I, right now I'm with Skyfall. So that's I, a roofer. Well, no, just as a sales, salesman. I don't yeah. But I, I mean, I'm sorry. When I say roofer, I mean, sales. You, I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, roofer or? yeah so, we, so we knock doors. I try to get news. I, I don't really like door knocking per se, but it's, it's part of the program. So. Um, yeah, but like this guy, I used to do that. Yeah, it's not easy. I can do it, but I'd rather get referrals, you know, personally. But yeah, so I went yesterday. I was in, in Man not Manassas, uh, Warrington, and there was a storm 2002. And I went back to this area called Snow Hill, and I'm driving down the street, and I'm, I, I must have done 15 or 20 roofs in there, and most of the roofs have been replaced, the ones that I had put on, you know, 20. What was it, 2002, 20, 21 years ago? I'm like, Jesus. Oh, wow. I'm like, why didn't I go back sooner? I drive yeah. in the cold a sec and I look up, and here's a roof that I got on 21 years ago, and the guy never replaced it. It's a, um, are you familiar with the GAF um, capstone shingle? Uh, what stone shingle? It's called capstone. I Is don't know new? if I am. It's Is a that new? It, it's a no, it's an old roof. They took off the market. To me, it's it looks like cut stone or slated. It's just gorgeous. Okay. And the, the roof was beat up in 2002. And I drive up and I left my car and stuff, but I haven't been able to get a hold of a guy. I just can't believe this roof. This roof looks terrible. I mean, after you're I, muffled. How about that? You're muffled. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? I think we can hear you better. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm sort of. I had some some problems with my cell phone earlier. How about now? No worries. No worries. Let me so try. Hook, I'm in my truck. Let me try hooking up one of my cords. Maybe that'll act like an antenna. Well, I think it was just you had the microphone covered, but no worries. But I know that you're busy and sick right now. It's like prime time hour for you, so I don't want to take too much. Oh of no, your no, time. no! I'm done for the day. Um, my day kind of went sideways, and I. You know, the guy called me out of the blue. I was I was working on an estimate that I normally wouldn't work on. Um, so I'm done for the day. It's it's okay. really it was too, it was too hot to be out today. It was miserable hot. That's wonderful. I live in Georgia, so and Evan lives in Texas, so we have also our own heat. In your Texas your heat, your heat's different than ours, and but, right. but, but we still. I mean, today was pushing a hundred with the heat in this industry, so whatever. Gotcha. Plus, I, I guess I just want to last mention week, bye. I contacted him last week so he could be here at seven. Oh cool. yeah. So so oh, yeah. what I want to do is uh, just even being aware of time because I don't have a lot of time myself. Um, and just looking in like we probably have about like fifteen minutes or so. Um, I, I do personally, and I mean, you guys are great to stay on after too. But uh, I just wanted to try to see for you. I have a question. Paul, but I'm getting feedback somewhere. It's like, yeah, yeah. That screen is shifting back and forth. Uh, somebody. Okay. I think that's better. So yeah, Paul, so what do you do? Like, I mean, your day went sideways. I mean, I found public adjusting after like 10 jobs. Cause I said, I used to knock on doors like you do. Um, I was like 10 of them went wrong and I never knew what to do. Like when I got a claim denied. So like for if you were teaching somebody, you know, or uh, let's say, you know, you were helping a homeowner, like what would you do when you had a denied claim? Well, we have several things. One, uh, we'll do an ITEL test on the shingle. You know, if it's, is it English or metric? Is it a, a discontinued shingle like the one I just mentioned? Or is it a certainty horizon, certainty independent, certainty hallmark? And then even then, I need to get educated because there's some singles that I, I don't even sure if I can recognize them. Yeah, but what so, if it's denied? I mean, what is this? What if it's denied? You know, we, you know, we just keep you know with our because pretty much the way we do it, we put all of our claims in. We have, well here, you know, do you know about the company called Hetrick Insure Claims? Uh -uh. Well, they're local here, so they're 
it's a crazy story and you wouldn't believe it but so phil hetrick is originally from uh peter st petersburg russia so he he met this guy here in the states i'm not sure how and he formed a, a company called hetrick company so all of his employees 99 percent, are in russia so he works under his name and the public adjuster badge under hetrick companies but then he formed another company called sure claims same people they just don't put the public adjuster out front to kind of be, you know, just come in under the radar. So norm, but for almost all of our claims, insurance claims, we're, we're putting them in under, under sure claims through Skyfall. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, of course we, you know, we have to supplement at the end. So what we try, I try to document everything up front, but it doesn't matter. They still deny it. Mm -hmm. uh, how long? How long does it take when you send one to a public adjuster? How long does it take this? Um, uh, it can be well. Or... I've had the, I've had them as quick as, as two hours, which just doesn't happen. That's almost impossible. That happened just about two months ago. Okay. Literally two hours from the time I met this public or I met State Farm independent guy, I got a call from our claims department. The claims settled, uh, paid for the roof, gutter siding. I mean gutters, downspouts window screens, interior damage, overhead and profit. And he didn't hold any depreciation and they'd already cut the check or released the check. Nice, nice. Now, so why was the public adjuster needed on that one? We didn't need one. That's the stupid oh, part. Okay, that's what I, I guess my, that's what I was asking is. So, no, it, you know, so sometimes you kind of you jump the gun, but it's pretty rare that you get, a, I mean, two hours is, I've never heard of such a thing in my life. Right, what, what do you guys get on average? I'd say, a month, sometimes two months. A month to two months. Yeah, and then the worst I've had personally about a year and three months. Soup the nuts. Start to okay, finish. and that's what I think I heard you were talking about when I was coming in. Yeah, and that was, and that was, that was a with a one-off company here called Loud Mutual, and they're they're worse than Allstate, which is kind of hard to believe. Oh, that's that's a whole. You just said a whole lot. So for you, um, is it just roofing claims you guys handle, or you do interior stuff too? Yeah, well. So primarily what we're looking at, and, and we got to work on it because we have a separate division. We have a retail and have, have the insurance side, but we're kind of a one trick pony is that we're mostly going after the roof. But of course, anything gutters, you know, window screens, a siding, but we haven't had a good storm in a while to get that, you know, three and four or five trades, which that's when you get the OMP. So we're hoping yeah. for a good storm. We had a small storm last night, one inch hail in a, in a very small area. Okay. But, gotcha. but we're in a weird weather pattern right now, the El Nino or La Nina, whatever it's called. Okay, gotcha. So you're not so interior is not your jam. But you know, take uh, but but they are they're gearing up to start doing more of that. And uh so we have the office in Manassas, we got just open one in Richmond and we're looking at Maryland. Um but part of their five year plan is going into about ten other states and adding more interior like remodeling. They even mentioned HVAC and electrical and plumbing, which okay. I don't know if they're biting off more than they can chew. We'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's cool. That's really cool. Um, so all the, so once you have a, a – what's your usual process, I guess? I mean, you talk to the homeowner. You, so we'll uh, – Yeah. So we'll knock on the door. Yes, I say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, I notice you've got, you know, discontinued single. You've had a lot of storms lately. We're out in the area. We just help Mr. You know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, can we do it? You know, like to give you a free roof inspection because, you know, most people never get on the roof. It's kind of like a, equated to a, a going to the doctor once a year. So then if you can get an ins inspect the roof, I'll go up and I'll, I'll chalk it up. I won't chalk it up like a test square, but I'll, I'll look at the soft metals. I'll look at the shingle. You know, it's got drip edges. It got ice and water. Are the soffits vented, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, they, I've got a hay gauge, but a hay gauge really doesn't really mean much anymore because it doesn't, it doesn't. But there there are some 20, there are some 20 year three tabs out there still. Um, so, Paul, I got a question for you. So once you see damage to a roof, do you actually get an opportunity to refer them to something if they have damaged interior? So if they've got damaged interior, we can do a tarp on the spot. Um, and we usually charge for it and then of course get it back on the back end from the insurance um but we do yeah we do have 
in-house people or subs that we can bring in to do painting drywall. Oh, okay. And oh, usually okay. I try to do that on all the jobs because then, you know, the people, then they don't have to go running around looking for other people. Yeah. So okay. one-stop shop. So, but when yeah. I'm on the roof, I look at the chimney, you know, you know chimney flashing, uh, chimney cap, um, you know, soft plywood. You, if you're walking on 3H plywood, you're going to feel it under your feet. I'll go in the attic. I'll look for, see if I can see a stamp or if the, or if the plywood's like a dark mahogany, you know, it's been there a long time. Right. Um, and then uh, I look at the, I'll look out to the eave to see if I can see daylight. If you got proper, you know, airflow, do you need a power vent? Is you got, it's the passive, you know, it's the passive, you know, route going to work. And some, some of these houses are just landlocked and they have no air getting in and the roofs yeah. are just toasted because of bad ventilation. Yeah, that's all those parts that you were mentioning. That's great for somebody like Evan, who's never been up on the roof. You said you've been doing this since you were interested in it since you were five. Yeah. So I know how can can we ask how many decades has it been since you were five? I'm 63. 63. Okay, cool. So, Six Paul, Paul, have you seen or maybe can you tell us, are you able to identify it like a new an insurance adjuster versus an experienced insurance adjuster when you meet them? Oh, you mean on the roof? Yeah, like when you go out to the inspection with the insurance company, can you tell a, a newbie from an oldie? Sometimes. Well, here's the problem. It's, and it's changed so much from 99. 99, it was, it, there wasn't any uh, seek now, roof now, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was an adjuster that worked for the insurance company. And it was either it's either a staff adjuster or an independent adjuster. And to be honest with you, back then I used to learn more from those guys. But the guys now they're just they're just giving them some bullshit, you know, maybe some Hague training, whatever. And they just get up there. But it's like you're paying these guys to come up on the roof. I mean, what that's sort of what's the angle there? So who's really going to tell the truth if you're paid for this guy to come up and inspect your, you know? So you paid Seek now or or uh, Hancock or whoever. There's a whole bunch of them. Now there's yeah. a few of them, there's a few of them that are good, and I know them, you know. And I always I never get confrontational because they're there to do their job and they're to do mine. Yeah. If, if I disagree with what they see, then that's great. And you know, we'll see you on the next one. I'll, I'll I'll send it to our guys and let them figure it out because you never never get in an argument with anybody because you're going to see them again and you get blacklisted. You'll get. You, you, I've heard about it. I've talked to other adjusters. Oh, yeah, we heard about that company. You know, they're... so tell us about this seat now, ladder now, because some people watching may not know. We have a, I have a huge audience that are about your age. We, can, your thumb is like, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, oh, oh, oh um, you're right. I'm bad. My bad. I'm so, not used to um, computer. <laughs> the, uh, so our, our, my audience is in, in your age group, and the, most of them want to become insurance adjusters. That's why I mentioned that. So some of them are starting brand new. Some of them may have some construction experience. But to me, <laughs> the IA side, because I've worked with like State Farm and Big uh, Big Blue, they, you know, it's a little bit different, but they also will put people who are green, green as can be, out there to go up on the roof, maybe never having been on the roof before. So I was just curious if you, you know, either had advice for people getting into the industry. Um, well, one thing they could do would be, you know, and I would tell this to any, because, you know, it's how do you sell something or do something if you've never done it? So maybe it, maybe you get on a roofing crew for a summer if you can, or at least minimum go by and watch a job from start to finish to see see what they do. Because I'm going to tell you what, there's that, the guys that work on those roofs for eight, ten hours a day is unbelievable. I couldn't do it. Even back to my right. I, mean, I definitely will recommend watching one, but I did what you did. Like, well, I started to do what you do now. Okay. And just, you know, really use my time as far to train myself and make money along the way if I was able to show somebody that they had damage to the roof. Um, so that was a way for me to learn about crease shingles, the uh, chimneys flashing, things of that nature, the different types was because I started, I was a salesperson first. That's, you From know, way back to me, too, was I mean, the easiest way. 
I learned a lot from these because there was a lot of older adjusters back then. Now it's all these young guys. You know, I'm up there with these guys that are 20 and 30. And I'm like, Christ, you know, I got a 34 year old son and grandkids. So that knowledge base is kind of gone. Those those things are gone. But I learned a lot. Uh, and back then we had the hand measure the roof. So I used to have a hundred foot tape, and this guy, this old guy, told me that. So you take a tennis ball, you cut a slit in it, you put some money in it, you hook your hundred foot tape in there, and wrap a half a roll of of uh, electrical tape around it i could go up on a 12 12 roof walk the ridge and i could stand up there and i could bounce a ball right down to the gutter get my measurement pop it out like a fishing reel reel it up then i could hook it on the rake and walk you know 100 feet and get the rake measurement or, or the ridge measurement so but you had to get up on a roof sweating with a pad of paper and your tape measure and try to scribble a roof and then it makes sense it was and then, of course, the adjusters had their uh, exactimate. They could draw it, but um, but they still had to go up and hand draw it so they could come down and put it on the template and draw it. Right, right, um, right. And then I had a guy, this was, this happened last about a year ago, two years ago. I had a USAA guy, independent. There were only four tabs on this whole roof that were bad, three tabs. And I told the homeowner, and he said, well, let's try. I said, okay. He bought the roof. He bought all the gutters and downspouts, most of the window screens, a grill cover, two garage doors, overhead and profit. And then I'm doing my roof estimate. I'm 10 squares off. He gave us. And I said, how could he give us? So I'm looking at my Eagle view. And then on the back page, you got the little roof drawing. He had drawn it in Xactimate and added numbers to it and gave us 10 squares free. Wow. So what am I? You know, so anyway, that that doesn't happen. That's a rarity itself, but. So back in the yeah, day, I, I wonder too. I have to be honest. I mean, I don't know the person, but I wonder how green they were as well. <laughs> you know, because that is a rarity. Or yeah, think, if it was somebody I, on their way out, because that I think it was just recently. Well, to say you know they're not buying it a thing. So '90s versus now is real different. And then on the roof across the street, they didn't like something about the way we were trying to price the metal roof, so they brought in uh, they had a. USAA had a preferred contractor. He came in and wrote this most ridiculous thing, and they accepted it. We're like, good lord, man! I know. So <laughs> you, so you feel like now you're dealing a lot with preferred contractors, the um, seek now, ladder now. Yeah, there and there. There's another company. It's I've, I've met them several times. I can't. All state uses different people, um, but Hancock, Seek Now, which used to be. Ladder assist or ladder now? Yeah, why do you think that the majority of them are moving towards that way? Well, I guess part of it was maybe liability for their employees getting injured. Okay. Um, I heard of one guy got killed, an adjuster walked off a roof. Jeez. But um, but I don't know. It's just the whole, you know, of course, Xactimate's owned by, I think, travelers. It's, it was put together by insurance companies for insurance companies, but Everybody uses it. If you don't use it, now there is one guy that tries to use um, like their own estimate and, and then throw it back to the insurance company and say, "Well, this is what we're using. We're not, you know." But if you if you can't talk in their language, I don't think they're going to play ball. Yeah, I don't know. What what's your thoughts on that? If well, um, well, listen, it's okay. I think, in my opinion, to use the third party to inspect. But I don't want to, I want to talk to the adjuster that's making the decision while the inspection is going on. Because if we're disagreeing and then it goes back and forth and left and right, 360, we're a month down the line and nothing has been done. And now we do a reinspection and now the actual adjuster comes out and, you know, it could have saved about a month of time. Exactly. But I do think that it's, you know, it's the staffing. They had a staffing issue in my in my eyes. And so this was the solution. Just like any warehouse company will bring in forklift drivers, you know, right. that type of thing. Like we just gotta get we just trying to get the process done. And then the other thing too is let's see, uh, it's liver no. Erie. Erie and another company, they're not using Xactimate, they use some weird Think, yeah, there you go. There used to be another one a long time ago, but I think they either got bought up or eaten up, or I don't know. When you when you would open it up, there was like a, a house, and it would spin around like in three dimensions, and 
Oh, before my time. And you could, you could touch the roof. <laughs> you touch the roof, and then it would open up the. Uh, it would open up what, what looked like. Just, and that's. I'm kind of mad at myself that I never learned how to use exact. I mean, I had opportunities. Sure. And but you know, if you don't, you got to be a student of this because you got to. You really need to know as much as you can. I know. I know the construction side, and I've been on thousands of roofs. I've been in Wisconsin twice, Illinois, uh, New York, Columbus, Ohio, St. Louis twice, Jackson, Tennessee, and all around the DMV. Wow. So I got a question, Paul. So which roofing would you say most homeowners are going toward? Because a lot of advertisement has been the metal roof versus the shingles. What would you recommend to a homeowner that was looking for a new roof? I, mean, I don't know much about the metal, but I have seen it. And I think the company that makes it is called Erie. Oh, Erie okay. Metal Roofs or, or something. But I've, yeah, it pops up on YouTube or pops up on your phone. I, to be honest with you, I haven't seen many of them. Um, I, I, I guess they're, right now they haven't really done much in the market. Mm -hmm. You know, most of your people got go with the standard, you know, architectural. Some people bump up to the, you know, the designer. Uh, it all depends on the HOA or if you're in a, you know, a, a neighborhood that's predominantly wood or metal, which is rare. Awesome. And of course, a lot of it depends on what the builders put up and what people are used to seeing. I don't know, down in Texas with all the hail, I guess you guys probably have the, what, the class four hail impact resistant, like rubberized shingles. They do. Like even they have, uh, they also spray a, this coating on the roofs down in the Southwest to keep the temperature lower on, on the roofs. Cause you know, it's just so hot. Now here's something crazy. Have you heard there was a company that I worked for briefly up in Columbus called, um, um oh, come on, Paul. <sighs> Senior moment. Um, Fiesel. So Fiesel Roofing. So there were two brothers and they were both smart, went to college. They sold their company, but before they sold it, they were working with Ohio State University, and they, they came up with this soybean oil that you can go up to a roof if, if it's not too old, and they'll do some tweaks and this and that, but then they spray the soybean oil that reactivates the oil you know, in the, in the asphalt. And mm. one coat, they'll give you a five-year warranty. Two coats, they'll give you a 10-year warranty. Oh, okay. Mm. That's awesome. Um, That's I, I did it, not know that. I think it's called Roof Max. If you Google Roof Max, you'll find it. R R O O F M A X X Roof Max. Hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, but and there's then of course, another I, company called uh, Roof Magic now. Okay. Roof Shingle Magic or something. They're also trying to re give life back to the shingles. Um, mm -hmm. But I unfortunately, Evan and I have to uh, catch a meeting now, and. Um, so we have to hop off, but Paul, it was a super pleasure talking to you. It was uh, cool to hear your story. Um, met uh, Renee is a public adjuster there in Virginia, and uh, we, she works with a great company. And uh, I know that you guys have some things set up, but we would love to, I know she would love to have an opportunity to be able to um, help you if you, you know, get a denied claim and you just got stuck. And you're like, you know what? Well, let me see if this guy over Renee and her team. Let me see how they work to help you guys out. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And um, and if we need to talk more, I you know I can make I can do time early in the morning. You know, between you know eight and ten, eight and eleven, or I can do it. You know, the same time frame. Okay. Awesome. We'll right. see you. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wait a minute, Bye, Paul. Um, I mean, Kay, do you have anything that you wanted to ask? Any questions? No, um, your story is fascinating, Paul. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you seem like you have so much uh, experience. You probably know more than uh, uh, some of us, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, mainly I just wanted to come on to uh, find out what your history is. Um, I guess one question I would like to ask is, um, you talking to Renee, are you interested in becoming a public adjuster as well? Um, probably not. It, it's not sort of in my my realm of thoughts at this point. Um, uh -huh. I mean, with the company I'm, I'm with, they've, they've got a, like a five year plan and, they, and they're they've already opened one office and they're going to open a third. And then they got they have a, a, a you know, they want to get into 10 or 12 other states. So my thought process there would be maybe having my own office being a sales manager but then having guys under me uh-huh that's sort of where kind of where my head's at at this point um 
Are you? Um... Cause I'm kind of a more, I like to be out, even though I'm not going to be climbing on roofs too much longer. I still like, I like being out, meeting people, being on the roof and yeah. Um, I'm sort of an outdoor person. I, I've never been able, not to say you have to be in the office all the time, mm-hmm. but um, I've always been, I've been in construction since I was 19. And I've only had one job that I was retail for a very short, I was selling water beds. Don't ask me why. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it and I couldn't I couldn't wait to quit. Uh, Jesus Christ. I worked for a company called uh oh what were they called? It their little their little logo was the little dripper. That's back when like water beds was the rage. Everybody had a water bed, but that was like You're telling all your age now. I know it. <laughs> water beds and black light posters. <laughs> oh my god beanbag chairs and candles <laughs> oh my god chuck do you have anything for paul well are there any types of rules that you would say kind of stay away from as far as something i would install yeah, yes Hmm. well three tab i wish they would take the three tab single off the market i, I don't even understand that single at all but people still, there's, I've seen million dollar homes where the builder put a three tab single. I'm like, good Lord, man. Um, yeah. What's the impact of it, of, of a three? I don't know what, they're terrible. I mean, you know, they got a wind rating. I, oh, the wind's over 60 or 70 miles an hour with the voids of warranty. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get those kind of wind gusts all the time. Um, I don't know why they keep making them. I guess there's a, there's a need for it. Um, but I mean, you got all your standard um, architectural shingles, and then you got your your like the, just like a one up, like a pro version, and then then you get into the designer. But well, wood shingles, I, I you know cedar shingles, I don't I don't I wouldn't recommend to anybody. One because they're expensive, two because they're hard to maintain, and three they've got all the other you know like Da Vinci and other synthetic ones you can go with. So mm-hmm. what, what about these? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, what about these new uh, metal shingles that are made? I mean, yeah, they're shingles that are made out of metal, but they, they're made to look like just... Yeah, so basically similar. it's a corrugated or, or a, a, has a simulating a surface of certain shingles, and then they spray they spray a coating that emulates, sorry, emulates uh, like a granule shingle, but... I, I can't. I can't really talk about it because I don't. I've never seen one installed. I've seen them at you know, ABC. They have them on display. Are they supposed to be like stronger than the regular? Shingles? Yeah, I would say they, they. They must have at least a class four impact rating. I would think would take you know probably a baseball size hail. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I, I. But I really don't have any knowledge. I've never. I've never specified. I've never seen a built. I've never. I'm not even sure if I've even seen seen one in the area, to be honest with you. But I see them being pushed very heavily on YouTube and, you know, social media. Yeah, because I've I've seen the ads. And so I'm just wondering if they're uh you would have a better advantage with the metal shingles versus just the regular. I guess yeah, I, I one of these days maybe I'll I'll get involved with one and I'll see it up close and maybe I'll have, you know, because I think I think you might have to put like, you know, not that it's a big deal. I think you have to put down like wood battens to raise it off the roof and then you attach it maybe with screws. And probably it's like any other roof, you know, most of the screw fasteners are hidden and then the last few that aren't, you have to either caulk or they have some kind of a, a gasket, you know, or something or other. I do have another question for you. Um, I mean, I, I've gone to just I've just driven through neighborhoods and I've I've seen roofs with just patches. Uh, do you guys just go out there to do patches, or are you going to argue for? A oh, patch? absolutely not. No, and uh, you know I tell homeowners, God, why you know why didn't your roofer? The roofer didn't know, but now even still, if the roof's got patches on it, we'll still try to fight because generally, if it's got patches, you go back six months a year later, there's more damage because. The guys who did the installation did damage, and now the shingles that are around them are getting wind damage. So, no, we we will never do a repair. It's either all or nothing. And if if a claim gets denied and we can't get it approved, we won't. You know, we're not going to do half a slope. But we're we're pretty good about getting stuff approved. Okay. Um, uh, who who's doing the negotiating with for you when you're um 
you know, talking to insurance companies. That's the public adjuster side, oh. yeah, or, or the claim side. So it, it starts off under sure claims, which is, and I don't know how, I don't know how the insurance company perceive them. I should maybe ask them that. That's an interesting question. Because I'm sure they're not the only company like that out there that's working using the public adjuster knowledge and database and, you know, Xactimate, but, but not putting it in print. So mm. they're just, they're just, you could Google them. So this is crazy. So, so Phil's originally from St. Petersburg. Most of his guys are in Russia. He's got one girl in a Great Falls office that's in the office of another contractor that he does work for, you know, supplements his claims. They just open up their sure claims office to separate it from this other company. So now they're off their new office is in Anchorage, Alaska with a, with a Virginia phone number. Wow. I'm like, guys, you may want to, there's a little problem there. I think you may want to change that Virginia number to <laughs> now when I think of Anchorage, I don't know. I think we have stereotypes like people have stereotypes about California and Texas and you know, everybody lives on a ranch and has a gun. So I was thinking of, but Anchorage looks like any major city anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, where their offices looks pretty nice. I don't know. I wish you knew. I don't. I wasn't expecting Eskimos and polar bears, but you know how it is. You get to perceive what what does it look like? What does Alaska look like? Well, probably a lot of it does look like that. But Anchorage, I guess, is one of the bigger cities. But it's just bizarre they picked that. But I guess they're close. Anchorage is pretty close to Russia, so maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm surprised they don't just put the public adjuster um, name out front because usually, like I've seen before, where insurance companies kind of insist on seeing your license, and you can't really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how they. I don't know how they. How they're. That's a good. And I don't really. I've never asked, and I never. But I have sort of wondered about that. How how they're perceived by the insurance company. Yeah, because um, most insurance companies will insist on seeing that you're licensed. And if you're a company rep uh, who's hiring uh, public adjusters under you, uh, they're gonna need to see like the the overall license too. So um, I don't know how they could get around that. And usually some states will sue you if you're, um, if you're not licensed. So, I know they've had they had some issues where we had to we had to change our paperwork. It got to the point where because I think the way we were working was probably it was probably in a gray area. But so what what had to happen is that Hetrick would have to send the email from their from their email domain to the homeowner who would fill this thing out. Then it was sent back electronically. So it had it had to come from them and go back to them, and we couldn't be involved in any way, shape, or form. And yeah. I know there's lots of rules and regulations, and it seems like he was, he might have been investigated a few times or got his hand slapped anyway. Yeah, I mean, I would think that it would be easier just to be up front saying we are a public adjusting company versus we're something else, but we're, we also do public adjusting on the side or something like that. It's just yeah, and, and now there was some, there was some times where I wasn't really sure, and I thought, eh, I wonder what's going on here, but I just kept doing what I was doing, and you know, if they got their hand in the cookie jar it wasn't you know it wasn't going to be me it wasn't my fault but yeah i have a question are you said that your company here is moving into maryland what about dc area and you uh, know how soon they're thinking about doing it that i don't know and i i can ask brian i can ask him if that's a state they're going to go into that i don't know are you guys working in, in dc yeah we're working in dc maryland Philadelphia, New Jersey, where yep, we're all up in in northern region. Okay, I got you. I could find out. I at this point, I don't think they are going to, but I could see. I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Now with this other company, Michael and Son, we were working in D.C. I guess the, the list. Some of it's the logistics and getting in and out, and just sometimes the difficult. You know, set not all your jobs. There's a lot of big homes, big big homes. I mean, there's some money up there. I mean, dag um. I forget the street I was going up and down, but it's just like, you know, see um, metal roofs or, or, or old slate. And these are like million, two million, three million dollar homes, but parking and logistics and the way oh, the yeah. houses are set back. And it, we still run across that here too. Sometimes, you know, where the house is just a nightmare. 
and the reason why I asked about Merlin because there was a client that I had spoke with and she is going to be in need of a roofer. It's just she has not committed herself yet, but okay. she does. She will need a roofer because she has water damage in the inside of her property and it's due to an older roof. I got you. Yeah, I, I will. We were supposed to open up this month, but they got sidetracked opening up the Richmond and our 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 sales guy, our regional sales manager. He he showed me a schedule one day. I was like, "Good lord, when do you sleep?" One day I said, "What are you doing this weekend?" He goes, "I'm going to be in the studio." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Oh, I got a studio in my basement. He makes videos for us, and he makes videos to put on you know YouTube and stuff." I'm like, "Good lord, dude!" He gets up at four thirty and goes and works out for a couple hours. Wow. I'm like, I'm, I'm usually just sometimes falling asleep for the second or third time. At 40. <laughs> Christ. I'm like, damn, man. 4.30, that's, uh, that's a, I can't get up at 4.30. Uh, anyway. Well, is that all the questions y'all have for him? For now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you got, if you want to, if you want to give them my email, and, and you want to, I know sometimes you don't think what question until you like, go, dang, I wanted to, but I can answer, I can answer emails or texts or whatever. And he does every time I reach out to him, he does respond. So I definitely and, want to thank you for that because you. Do so your, I've got just to give yep. you, you know a quick synopsis. I've like I I I've got a, a great deal of background in commercial remodeling, you know, tenant build out. I worked in the Pentagon once and they're doing a super secret room in their basement, but um, mostly residential remodeling. I was a lead carpenter. I mean, I can, I can frame with wood or steel, hang drywall, do drywall repairs, crown molding doors, wains coating. I can hang a door from scratch or pre pre hung install windows. I've done. Well, you got more... time to do all that. Well, that was over. I was from 19 to, you know, that was over 40 years. Wow. You, you can you can squeeze a lot in. Um, <laughs> um I've built decks, I've done bathrooms, I can do tile work, painting, but you know, you can't be good at all of them. So you, you, you get proficient, but you can't be, you know, an expert at all of them. But mm-hmm. I had a homeowner the other day where he said our guys broke his wrought iron rail right beside his front door. Well, a bird would have landed on it, broke. This is the second time it's been repaired. I saw this piece of crap repair that was done. So I said, All right. But I knew how to fix it. I already fixed it. I knew what I was going to do before I even did it. I went out, bought the materials. I cut the thing off. It was a hollow tube. So I, I looked at this piece of uh, aluminum tubing at Home Depot. I said, that looks about right. I grabbed it, some epoxy, cement. It slid right in. I put the epoxy in it, cut it to where it needed to, marked it to where I wanted it to be, let it sit overnight, came back. I had to drill out the old cement hole where the concrete and the metal were all broken off. Yeah. Use this special quick setting uh, cement, set the thing in there. I shimmed it with shingles that I had left over, propped it up, let it sit for a couple of days and it was done. But all because this homeowner claimed that we broke his rail that was deficient, rock rusted and, and was already broken. But in uh, order to get the final payment to satisfy him, I had to do it. Yeah. But I can build almost anything. And I've already, if I haven't built it out, I can look at it and go, this is what I would do. Or you can watch a video. I mean, I, I learned a lot of stuff watching videos of other Yeah, people. the YouTube videos are very, very good. Because sometimes you get up with a homeowner and they know more about a product than you do. I'm like, yep. Jesus, how do you know all that? Uh, watch YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, there's, there's, it, but like I say, you never stop learning. You never stop learning. Nope. I'm always like sometimes instead of watching the TV show, I just I'll watch you know sales videos or you know whatever. Uh, just there's all kinds. Of, I'm sure you guys are familiar with them, most of them. Some of them I am. Okay, you probably more familiar. Than Chuck, you're probably familiar with a lot more than I am. I am not a YouTube video watcher. I'm TikTok. I'm TikTok. I'm okay. Not- <laughs> I watch I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I don't have TikTok, so I don't watch TikTok. I'm not even sure. I mean, I, I kind of know what it is, but I don't. I don't know. Other than what people send me, I don't know how you. Do you get on it like YouTube? Do you, is there a thing where you can yeah, stream you from? Just got to download an app, and then once you get on it, you'll just see it's going to be videos after video, nonstop videos of all okay. kinds of stuff. They got stuff that I have never even heard of, and cleaning stuff that you can use for your home and it's just like stuff that you have in your house already 
It right. Be it's very interesting. Instead of spending six dollars, seven dollars, you got it sitting there already. And then sometimes just getting someone to do it when you can do it yourself. True. Very yeah. true. Yep. So, but I want to thank you again for allowing us to do this with you. I appreciate yeah. it. And then you know, like I say, if you if you want to give links to them, you can give them my email or text. Uh, you know, if you oh, if you because you got something because I know a lot of times I, I'll. I'll draw a blank, you know, you got all the stuff you want to say and you're like, Jesus, I should have said that or this, blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, I do a lot of, when I'm driving, I'll do mental checklists and I'll go, oh, Jesus, you know, I should have said that or did this or, but, you know. <laughs> Shoot, we might, hey, Kay, we might want to have him in one of our, our um, uh, Tuesday meeting, corporate meeting. Yeah. All this expertise he knows. I know. <laughs> Shoot. Well, it, it's it came hard, you know. When I was nineteen, I didn't know nothing. I, I mean, I really didn't, you know, didn't have a good story. I didn't have any crazy experiences. I hadn't traveled. It just, you know, it accumulates, and I, I do enjoy. And that's kind of part of the reason I'm excited with these guys because I would like to travel because I've lived in this area off and on since '72. I wish I really lived near the water. If I could have, if I could work a hailstorm near the water, I'd be, be there. careful what you ask for. Yeah, hey, with these water storms, I don't know. Yeah, hurricane season's coming up, so yep. yeah, yep. Um, oh, do you know they set a record yesterday, in Florida? It was the water temperature off one of the coasts was one hundred one point six seven. It's like what the hell? That's like yeah. a song. I heard about I mean, that. I mean, now imagine if a hurricane came washing on top of that. It, it might kick it up to a Category 6. I don't know if there is such a thing. It could. But, but I mean, if we have that kind of temperature and a storm comes over and eats up that energy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yep. Weird things are going on. Let me ask you one last question, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you, um, not you yourself, but your company, do you do your own uh, work for the roofing or do you contract the work out? It's all contracted out. Yeah. I mean, and unless you're a super huge company with like, you know, you're doing hundreds of roofs a, a week, everybody ha has subs. So, I mean, some might be a cop to sub, but most of the time it's a sub that are, they're, they're doing work for other people. Okay. You, and I always, you, I always tell the homeowner that I say, if anyone tells you anything different, they're probably lying to you. Uh-huh. Do you um guarantee the work? Uh, even though it's being, you know, subcontracted out. Yeah. So what we do is our crews are certified. You know, we have paperwork. They're certified. Our company is certified to through certainty, and they do something unusual. They offer a ten year labor warranty, and then that ten year labor warranty for the first ten years, they'll do an annual roof inspection. And they'll and they you don't have to call them. We'll they'll reach out to the homeowner and set it up. Every for ten years, they just come out and do it. They will come out once, you know, once, once, once a year to look at the roof, which is another opportunity to you know, get your eyes in front of them, and also to say, hey, you know, last time I was here, you know, we talked about, you know, we do windows, we do doors, you know, blah blah blah. Because when you're at a house, you know, generally if the roof's bad, then you got gutters are bad, or or doors are bad, windows are bad, and they're all things you can upsell, you know, not in an aggressive way, but just say, hey. By yeah. the way, um, and you'd be surprised at these. Mini I was over in Potomac, Maryland, these million dollar homes. And it's like, how do these people just let their houses go to rack and ruin? Uh, I walk up to knock on this million dollar house and the door looks like it's rotting and there's carpenter bees eating their wood. And oh, wow. I, I don't know. You, you see it all. This house I just left. He's right there. He's right across from the CIA. McLean, I mean, right near the GW Parkway. And that's money up there in McLean, Virginia. Oh my God! And and, and this house is in terrible shape, but you know I, I can't I can't say anything to them. But it's like, I mean, the people did sometimes he just. Look, well, did he? Did you get a sale from him? Well, he's. I'm waiting for him because here's the here's the only rub. He, he the claim was approved back in August of 2019. Ooh. It was approved through. Liberty Mutual now, or, or through another company. Now he's got, but which I told him that's fine. Claims approved doesn't matter if you switch companies, it's still active. But the problem is, will they release the depreciation this far down the line? I don't think they will. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's but, what the property, okay. But the only thing I've got going for me, I got a cedar roof, we got copper and some other stuff. 
and his HOA will allow all kinds of different shingles, even including a high-end architectural. So we could take that money and, and still get them a nice roof without, because mm-hmm. right now I think they're holding, I think they're holding 18 or 20,000 in depreciation, which sucks. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. But um, he's supposed to send me the paperwork. I said, you got to send me the paperwork. And I said, I'll look at it. Or I'll, I'll comb through it. I'll run it past our guys and see what we can do to get you a new roof. Yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't complain about the depreciation from the beginning. He got confused. And, and you know, he, he and I said, I, it's, it's confusing. And I have a lot of homeowners, not you, all come up to me and say, well, I just got the claim. And I thought you told me, you know, I only had to pay my deductible. I said, wait, wait, this is, it's recoverable. The, the word, the key word is recoverable. So when we do the work, we invoice the insurance company, we get you to sign a certificate of completion that you're happy we did the work, then they'll release that money. You know, and then the other problem too is sometimes people don't get the uh, the code upgrades. And Allstate's famous for doing that. On the last two claims that we beat them, I come to find out there's like we lost two or three grand in, in uh, upgrades because the, ins- the company that writes the claim writes the claim. They don't care. They don't know about the language of Allstate or what Allstate policy says. And then Allstate comes back and says, nope, it's not in their policy. They don't have a group yet. So we're taking that, you know, three grand out. So that's what they did. Mm. Yeah. Um, but- that I, I'd say that that's part of the, I think it's part of the insurance agent who sold the policy uh it's mm-hmm. upon them to kind of like inform the homeowner saying you need to get the code upgrade and it they seems like it's you. more it's more money in their pocket the more you sell somebody the yeah. more you right. get, they right. get a monthly payment every time they make their payment why wouldn't you try to sell them all your bells and whistles i, I think they're afraid of losing the sell if the premium is too high because like i i'm also i also do property and casualty and uh, I'm in part of the network on Facebook and I see all these agents just uh, bragging about saving homeowners. Oh, I save my homeowner two, $200 a year. But, but then when I look at it, I'm like, why would you brag about that? Cause you had to take away a coverage in order to save that homeowner money. You really didn't just pull it out of a yeah. hat. You, you had to take away a coverage. So you really just wanted to make that sell you really mm-hmm. did not care whether the homeowner had the coverage exactly um, and like you said if they had just explained it to the homeowner how important it is to have the code upgrade mm-hmm. then when it comes time for the homeowner to make that claim they're not out you right. know thousands of dollars yeah exactly educate the homeowner yeah. let them make the decision but mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. our part now does your public adjuster do they do any educating with the homeowners at all because we do that. Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't. Be, I don't believe they've got. They got very little to any interact. I don't think they have any inter, inter, interaction with the homeowner. Okay. Um, but to your point about that, the other thing too that I run across is like I got several chimneys I'll see all the time where I know the last roofer that was there saw how bad the chimney was. Now this guy's chimney so bad, I could just take the top of it off with my bare hands. So it's like, so it's an inconvenience to me and it's going to slow me down. But the right thing to do is to let them know this is a problem. You need to get it fixed. I got a guy. Mm-hmm. Come look at it. Give you a quote. Let's do it before we do the roof. So you're not having this done on top of a brand new roof or, you know, because mm-hmm. people just don't want to, they don't want to be bothered. They're lazy. And they, they, but the right thing is to tell people, Hey, this is what I found. Mm-hmm. And, and I see it all the time. Guys just want to come in make, it's like, the guy, the guy, the smart roof, they, they helped this guy. Once it got a little sticky and it got a little uncomfortable, they they ditched the guy and ghosted him. Because all they care about is a quick, they want a quick, you know, money, quick can go, boom, you know. But there is no such thing. I mean, there is no quick. You got to do your time. You got to you got to educate the homeowner. You got to look at the claim. And, you know, you can't just ghost them. I mean, but I've heard, I've heard a lot of bad stuff about smart roofs. Simple roof. They're the same as ladder now. No, smart roofs. Smart roofs actually a a roofing company. Oh, oh, okay. They're pretty large, but being large, they, 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 I've heard they, they go up and they'll tear shingles off roofs and cause damage and do all kinds of stupid stuff. Just to, just to make that uh, sale. To get a. mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and and an adjuster is going to know right away when he sees that. There's no, you can't, 
you can't tear a single off and then a guy looks at it two weeks later and the guy wait a minute it's, it's not faded and look at the yeah. way it's torn off the wind wind doesn't wind is a whole it's a natural it's a natural it's not a just a violent thing it's it's yeah. over time but yeah mm. Well, again, we want to thank you for allowing us to do this with you. And I yes. know your time is important, so we want to definitely let you go so you can relax and enjoy the rest of the evening. Absolutely. I got a tomorrow. I'm going to um, Warrington for a siding seminar, so I'm going to get certified in some siding. That'd be interesting. Well, okay. Well, yeah. good luck with that. All right, guys. You know, I can say if you got any other questions, you think just shoot them out. I will. Email. I will okay. give them your email. Thanks, nope. Paul. All right, take All right, care, thank guys. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs>